Hello and welcome to Made by Karen Marie. And it is Sunday, February the 4th, and I thought it was as good a time as any <laughs> to show you what I made in January. Now, first of all, I have to apologize if I look a little bit scruffy today because <laughs> it's Sunday and I'm not going anywhere, so I didn't bother really, you know, putting on makeup and all of that. <laughs> and also I have caught a terrible head cold that's going around in my family, of course. <laughs> so this is the winter for the head cold. So if I sound a little bit stuffy, that's because I am. <laughs> If I have to stop a little bit under underways uh, to, to blow my nose, I will do so. But I thought I wanted to come on and tell you about what I made in January. If you can hear some sounds in the background, that is actually my wood burning fire <laughs> that's going. Um, so, you know, crackling, etc. is uh, part of the sound effects for the January makes very appropriate. <laughs> so I made seven things in January. Not bad, all things considered. January is usually a pretty busy month at work and, you know, there are lots of things going on. The kids are starting their afternoon activities again after the Christmas break and everything. So I'm pretty happy that I've been able to make seven things. So I'm going to show you, um, crackling, <laughs> the garments, obviously, and I'm going to put up some pictures of me wearing them. So the first thing I made in January is this um, sweater, which looks rather dull right here, and that's until you see the sleeves. <laughs> This is the Mood Fabrics Bixer sweatshirt. So this is actually a free pattern. And it's part of my Make 9 for 2024. Um, this uh, pattern is available in lots of sizes. As per usual, I didn't, you know, prepare and <laughs> put the sizes in, but I'll try to link to all the patterns below so that you can have a look at them yourselves. The only real change I did for to this pattern was that I it's it comes with a crew neck, but I don't think that crew necks suit me particularly well. I don't think they look very flattering on me, so I always prefer either a V-neck, a boat neck, or actually a turtleneck. And this didn't turn into a full turtleneck, but it's sort of a, a mock turtle, <laughs> I would say, which I really like. And this is made in a cotton jersey. Um, I can't remember where I bought it, but probably self-made. And the overlay is uh, like a tool that I got from self-made. I know I got that one there. <laughs> um, and I thought that this kind of sleeve would really kind of liven up uh, just a normal grey um, sweater. And I'm really happy with it. I've worn it loads. It is, the pattern is very, very cropped. And I don't um, particularly like that. So I extended the length. That's the other <laughs> pattern alteration I did. So I added on a mock turtleneck and then I added uh, quite a bit of length to it. I think I added maybe something like four inches and it's now hitting me sort of mid hip. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with it. I've worn it loads. The only difference or the only change I would do to my next um, version, I, I will be making more, um, is that I think that I will kind of, the, the, it seems like the overlay starts a little too far down on my arm, so I think I would cut the pattern piece that looks like a t-shirt <laughs> sleeve, right? I would just, you know, cut that a little bit shorter so that the overlay starts higher on my arm instead of like mid bicep. 
the sleeves are quite long on this um, sweater anyway, at least for me. I don't have particularly long arms, <laughs> um, but it's it's plenty long enough anyway, so I don't have to lengthen what I take off from the upper sleeve piece. I don't have to add anything on to the lower piece because they're plenty long enough anyway. So yeah, that was the Bixer uh, sweater. The second thing that I made was a Megan Nielsen Rowan um, long sleeve t-shirt. The Rowan is uh, of course a bodysuit as well as a t-shirt. I've, I've made plenty of the t-shirts. Um, but I've never made the bodysuit because I don't really wear those. But I, after I had my colours done, they suggested I should wear more pink, which I never ever really do. <laughs> so I bought this really, um, what's the word for it? Candy cane? Is that what you call it? No. Bubble gum. Bubble gum pink uh, uh, cotton jersey from my local fabric store. And oh, it needs an iron. <laughs> and I made this long sleeved um, Rowan. I also put in a little label. It says So Me by Little Rosy Cheeks um, because it was pink and I thought it <laughs> worked out really well inside it. So this is um, one of my wardrobe staples and I think I'm going to make more of those. The Rowan is um you know really versatile it has several i think like three maybe different length uh, neck options and of course you can vary the sleeve length and of course either just cut it off to a t-shirt or make the full bodysuit so that was item number two <laughs> and then i made the um the winter formal um, outfit for my daughter. Um, I made a circle skirt. I don't have the items here and I don't want to go into her room because she's in there <laughs> working. So I don't want to, to drag her out of her uh, homework uh, <laughs> mission today. Um, so I don't have the actual um, garments here, but I'll put up some pictures of her wearing them. Now I made two different tops for the circle skirt um, and I made the I am pattern Gaia so that it, from the same fabric as the skirt so that she could tuck it in and it would look like a dress. The pictures I have of this is not brilliant because she had sort of made an extra tuck in <laughs> and at the side so it looks a little weird but together they looked really uh, really well on her. And the other top I made to go with a skirt was a True Buyers Nico, but with a hack um, to make it um, sit outside of her shoulders. So it's off the shoulder kind of top. She loved that and she loved the, um, the, the color of the fabric. It really suits her. Um, but she found it a little bit constrictive to like, raise her arms because of course that would mean that the the kind of overlay would slip up on her shoulders she has rounded shoulders like i do so it's it's not the most practical thing in the end though <laughs> um she ended up wearing a full nico top because to the uh, to the winter formal because she caught a head cold um which i'm now <laughs> working my way through um so she needed a little more coverage uh, on her neck. So she just chose to wear one of her black uh, Nico tops that I've made for her before. So yeah, <laughs> uh, didn't really end up the way we had planned, but you know, hey-ho, that's life. <laughs> and um, after those makes for her, I made the True Buyers Blair skirt. And I made this in uh, denim that I got from my m late mother's stash and I also used the, <laughs> uh, I didn't have enough to make both waistbands in the denim so I just used another fabric that I had some leftovers for from and um, from her stash and I put a little label from Intensely Distracted that says mindful wardrobe and on the back it says 
Wear more, waste less, less wash when needed, as you can see here. Now, I made the um, kind of straight below the, the um, knee kind of length, the midi length, and I wasn't really sure about this, to be perfectly honest, because I felt like it kind of accentuated the, the mum tum. <laughs> um, and I was a little unsure on how to deal with that because it was also a little too big. I had pre-washed my fabric, of course, but I decided to just um, wash it again and then put it in the tumble dryer. I know, but you know, <laughs> I wanted to see whether that would actually shrink it a little bit more. And it did. And the reason why I sometimes do this is because I'm not the only one in my household that does the <laughs> laundry. And more than once, my homemade clothes have ended up in the tumble dryer anyway. And then, of course, they do tend to shrink a little bit. So I wanted to just do that on purpose this time and see whether or not it would shrink a little bit just to fit me a little bit more before I, you know, started altering it. The other thing about this is that my sewing machine, even though it's a faff and I love it, <laughs> it does not want to make good buttonholes. It takes a lot of coaxing and unless it's like really thin um so it doesn't like to do buttonholes on denim so the buttonholes told uh, some of them was really really badly done so i need to go in back and actually um fix that by hand i think um i have worn it a couple of times since i made it um the the little turn in the <laughs> tumble dryer actually made it fit a little bit better so i think it looks somewhat better i'm still not really sold on it and i think it actually is because there's button down all the front so i think this shape of Skirt would look better for me and my body type. It would look better if I had like a side zip or a back zip into it instead of the button opening in the front. So not the pattern's fault, obviously, because it's made that way. But yeah. Um, and the final, sorry, I have to check my notes. <laughs> and the final thing that I made was the Matilda shirt dress. I've already talked to you about my <laughs> experience with making up this pattern where I made the absolute, you know, made a fool of myself making it because mistake after mistake after mistake. So I'm not going to go into um, a full review on it because I've already done it. But, um, and I really kind of don't want to show you the inside because I made it like, total dog's dinner of everything inside but <laughs> i'm going to be brave anyway so this is where i had to uh, patch patch on with a different fabric because i had forgotten to cut them out twice this is the infamous um hole that i covered up with a label and you know um pretty much Everything that could go wrong went wrong with this one. So I'm not going to talk more about it since I've already done it. But the fabric is uh, really lovely, really soft. I got it from Rainbow Fabrics and it is an apple green viscose linen. So I am going to wear this, but probably more um, in the coming spring. So yeah, that was it, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven things that I made in January. And um, hopefully I'll put up, <laughs> I've uh, been putting up some pictures so that you can see what they actually look like on. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I will be back soon with my sort of rest of the winter plans. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you then. Please uh, consider subscribing if you like what you see. Give it a thumbs up. 
And uh, yeah, I'll see you later. Bye.